All right, so before we go on to the next um, example, I want to go back and review the steps for determining increasing and decreasing intervals and relative extrema. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to find the first derivative. Okay, so we're going to find the first derivative of the function. Remember that the first derivative is the slope formula. And what we're essentially looking for is, is the slope positive or is it negative? And that tells us whether or not the intervals are increasing or decreasing. So first we find the first derivative, and then what we're going to do with that first derivative is we're going to set it equal to zero. So that's one of the things we're going to do. And then we're also going to look for where the first derivative is undefined. So we have two things we're going to look for, and what we're concerned about is what are those x values that cause the first derivative to equal zero, and what x values would cause the first derivative to be undefined. So we want to keep in mind what does it mean for it to be undefined. Well, in order for the first derivative to be undefined, we'd have to have a variable in the denominator of that first derivative, um, some sort of variable, and it could be it could look like anything like x minus one. And what we're interested in is seeing what would cause that first derivative to equal zero. So in this case, x being one would cause the first derivative that denominator to be zero, and if the denominator is zero, then dividing by zero is not allowed, and we get something that's undefined. So two things we're looking for, uh, we're looking for x values that cause the first derivative to equal zero, we're also looking for um, x values that cause the first derivative to equal something undefined, so to be undefined. Two different things we're looking for. Okay, step three. Once we have those x values, we're going to write a number line, and we're going to put those x values on our graph. So let's say there's two. We're going to put those in boxes, and this is what we're going to call our critical values, our critical numbers. These separate the number line. Then, here it says, we're going to select a test value. So once we have the number line separated by those values that we found, those x values that we found in step two, we're going to pick some test values. So we have to pick test values um, to the left, test values in the middle, and test values to the right. So we want to pick in and around all of those boxes, all of those critical numbers. What we want to know is if I pick this number and I put it into the first derivative, does it make the first derivative positive? Now if it makes the first derivative positive, then we know we're increasing. So positive means increasing on that interval. If we put that test value into the first derivative, and it comes back with a negative number, we don't care what the number is, is we just want to know if it's negative, then that tells us that on that particular interval, then we are decreasing. Okay, so let's say we pick this and it's decreasing. Okay, So we pick a test value in and around all of those boxes, all those critical numbers, and we just want to know if we plug that test value into the first derivative, is it increasing, is it positive or negative? If it's positive, it's increasing on that interval, then uh, we kind of make our little arrow there pointing up, so say increasing from left to right. If we plug a test value into the first derivative and it comes back negative, then we say decreasing and we can draw a little arrow going downhill from left to right. Okay. Um, now once we've done all of that, then we can pick out the relative extrema. So the relative extrema, what we want to know is, do we hit a, a point at the very, very top of a hill or at the very, very bottom of a hill? That's what we're looking for. So we've actually already done this step here when we drew the boxes. So when we go to find the relative extrema, it's really just one extra step. What we want to know is, does the first derivative go from positive to negative? So in other words, if it's positive and then it goes to negative, okay, just look at what we're doing. We're going uphill and then we're going downhill. All, all this right here, all this step two says for finding the relative extrema is if you're going uphill and then you switch to going downhill, are you at the very top of the mountain or at the very bottom? So at the very top of a hill or at the very bottom of a hill? Well, this is at the very top, so would this be the relative max or the relative min? Well, if it's at the very top, I'm going up, 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 and then I come back down, then this must be at the top of the hill, so there, therefore that must be a relative max. So that's all you have to do for finding the relative extrema, is start to think about at the very top of the hill or at the very bottom. Um, if I'm going down, 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 and then I start to go back up, right, let's say on this part right here we're increasing, then we're, if we're going down, think about a roller coaster going down, 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 and then all of a sudden it starts to go back up, there's a certain point at which you hit the bottom. And if that's at the very bottom of the hill, then we would call that a relative minimum. OK, 
Okay. If we don't switch from going up and then going down or going down and then going up, then we don't have um, any relative extrema. Okay. So just to kind of review through the steps, what we're doing, find the first derivative, that's our slope, and the slope tells me uh, whether or not we're increasing or decreasing depending upon if that slope comes back positive or negative. Okay, so those are our steps. Really about four steps we have here. Finding the first derivative, setting it equal to zero, um, or where that first derivative comes back undefined. We find those x values, draw our number line, put those x values in boxes, pick text, test values in and around all of those boxes for our critical numbers. Um, put those test values into the first derivative, see if it comes back positive or negative slopes, and that tells me increasing or decreasing depending upon if it's positive or negative. After we do all of that, we have all of our increasing and decreasing intervals, then we just want to know, do we switch from uphill to downhill? And if we do, then we can pick out the relative maxes and relative mins.